Welcome to our ninth Outstanding Women Achievement Award Scholar. A shout to all the beautiful women in the room who are independent, not defined by your partners, parents, or children. You're defined by you, strong. Strong, tolerant, resilient, open-minded, nurturing, and gentle. So thank you for all the women who are here today, tonight, celebrating this outstanding gala with us. When women support each other, incredible things happen. I would like to invite our gala chair, Shamiji, who has been part of IAF since its inception and takes a pride to empower women in different roles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ninth annual Outstanding Women's Achievement Award Gala. My name is Shami Singh, and I am the chairperson of this incredible uh, gala. Every year, we seek to recognize women within our community who have contributed their valuable time making a difference within our society. Their accomplishments have been far-reaching, many in ways that go unnoticed. Today, we are here to recognize some of these amazing women and how their strength and character and courage have helped them accomplish and continue to achieve their goals. Now, officially, we begin the tonight program. I would like to invite entire board of trustees and our past honorees to join me to light the candles. To all the strong women, may we know them, may we raise them, and may we read them. So thank you. Thank you, Toro. Our next, um, our recent, um, I should say the winner, the president of IALI, I would like to invite Shashi Malik, who is also on the executive board of Nargis Dutt Foundation, to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Isma Chaudhary. Good evening, everybody. I, it's my privilege to introduce Isma Chaudhary. She is a fantastic woman. Dr. Ishma Chaudhary uh, trained in internal medicine from uh, Brookdale University Hospital Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York, and did her master in public health at Hofstra University. Dr. Chaudhary is an associate director at Metropolitan Center for Sleep Medicine in New York and an associate professor in the Department of Health uh, Science uh, at Hofstra University. She has served as the director of graduate PH programs and currently in the executive residence of the graduate public health program at the Hofstra University. Dr. Chaudhary is an interfaith advocate and a chairperson for the rights for women and that's just fit for today's event. She has been actively involved with the Islamic Center of Long Island for over 20 years. And in 2015, she was elected the center's first female president, and after serving the community for three years in 2018, was elected the first female chairperson of the center's board of trustees. So good evening, and thank you so much. It's, it's an honor for me to be here. Thank you, Induji, and all the organizers for this beautiful gathering. Um, today is the International Women's Day, which is a global day to celebrate women, their achievements, their accomplishments, and also their challenges. I, I wear this pin today. I, was, I like to wear pins, women and jewelry. You know? So I, I wore this pin. This is a, a unicorn. And what it reminds me, whenever I wear this uh, pen, it reminds me of women. It's unique, it's strong, and it's beautiful. That's how women are. And, and thank you, thank you. And women do accomplish a lot 
navigating through so many social challenges, which make it even more worthy of celebration. This day and this month is an ideal time to celebrate the brave, bold, and fearless women who have not just influenced history, but who make history every day. The important role that women have played in shaping our nation and the world is unfortunately often discounted. Women's contribution in the field of science, politics, environment, law, the arts, and last but not least, the role of woman as a homemaker can neither be undermined nor ignored. We have to remember that women just don't raise children. They raise communities, they raise nations, and they raise leaders. Empowering women is basically empowering communities because that's where the word goes. Think about the power in your own homes at dinner time. And I'm not talking about that the food is always good, right? What I'm talking about is the issues that women bring at the dinner tables are the issues that the children are paying attention to. That's why we say that the, the focus or the fulcrum of a household, of a family, of a community, of a nation, uh, of a village, of a town, goes around the women. Let's gain strength and focus from the women's suffrage movement in the US, which started in, nine, in 1848. There's still a lot for us to accomplish. Empowering women starts right with our families, our workplaces, and our neighborhoods. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do it together. Thank you so much. How about a big hand of applause for Induji, please. Thank you, what you do, you work very hard. We, I might get a credit because of your success, but the credit goes to you. And thank you what you do every day. Congratulations to all the honorees. Congratulations to all the women. What do you do every day? Thank you. Thank you. God bless. On behalf of the Indian American Forum, uh, we want to welcome you to the ninth annual uh, Women's uh, Gala program. As you, you got the whole nutshell from our keynote speaker, another round of applause for Dr. Isma Chaudhary. She put it everything word by word, all the women's role, from um, starting from the household to the professional achievements. Of course, today we are going to celebrate our honorees, whom you will hear about, and you will see them as, as we move forward. They are, they, we, have, we have selected them from different categories, and uh, you will be really happy to see and like again going back to the achievements and empowerment of the women who have, who have done in their, you know, um, lives. We also have two very nice young achievers whom you will see. And you should be proud of it that we are bringing in our, you know, young achievers. So our community should know what our second generation is doing. We are going to invite Senator Thomas to come and say a few words. And uh, meanwhile, I have Ms. Smithy Khanna, who is the past president of AIA, doing a wonderful job. Smithy, thank you for coming today. Kevin is, of course, you know, when he won elections. Nobody could believe when he ran two years ago that, uh, you know, people were asking me, who Kevin Thomas is? I said, you know, he's from our community. And a lot of people, you know, they were quite, the way the election came through and the way he won. Kevin, congratulations to you again, and thank you for coming. All to Kevin Thomas. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Auntie, for all those kind words. And thank you to Dr. Chowdhury for everything that she does. It's an absolute honor for me to be standing here in front of all of you today. It is a day we commit ourselves to making sure women and girls enjoy the freedom and rights they all have in this world. This day did not come out of the blue. 
It started in the early 1900s as a national movement for women. In America, basic rights were not extended to not just those who were not white, but also women. Today, the movement is a lot stronger, and there are many female leaders in our midst, just like Dr. Induji and Dr. Chaudhry, as well as so many other doctors here. You know, there were many female candidates running for president of the United States as well. Women are not looking for some special rights, but the same rights men enjoy in this world. They are our daughters, our wives, our mothers, our sisters, our aunts and grandmothers. Women have contributed so much to the betterment of human society. Without the contributions of women, our civilization as is would not exist. A future in which all women and girls are allowed to rise to their full potential will be the day we see a brighter future for the rest of the world. So on behalf of my mother, my sister, my wife, and my little baby daughter, I wish you all a happy Women's and Girls' Day. I am also here to honor women who have made a difference in our community. So when I call your name, please come up as New York State has proclamations for all of you. And before I do that, I just want to say this. I hope one day, instead of me standing here, I hope you always invite me, uh, I hope there's a South Asian female senator or a South Asian you know, legislator standing here giving out these awards because it's very important that not just a man be standing up here, but a woman be standing up here as well representing all of you. All right, so uh, also I just want someone here with me because I talked about you know, my mom and my wife and my daughter. I have here my best friend's mother, Mrs. Basin. Mrs. Basin, come up here. So when I give out these awards, I want her with me as well because I've known uh, my best friend since high school, Chandeep Singh. So I want her to give out the awards with me, all right? <laughs> all right, so I have Dr. Francesca Casillo. Please come up. Uh, Honorable Elizabeth Pas Pasella. Dr. Isma Chowdhury. Dr. Saroj Shah. Ashmita Yugaraj and Prachi Dua. Okay, now the time comes where we are going to be uh, starting to honor our honorees. Our first honoree is going to be uh, a very special Dr. Francisca Ocasio. And I'm going to ask Indy Singh. Indy took the initiative and started this chair. So Indy, would you look, like to come and introduce Dr. Ocasio? Good evening. It's both an honor and a privilege for me to stand here today to introduce our next honoree. I met Dr. Cassio in 2010. In 2008, as I mentioned, my father established the chair in Sikh musicology at Hofstra University in memory of my mother. But after searching for two years, the university had not found the right person to fill the chair. Dr. Cassio's name was mentioned to us, but we thought it very unlikely that someone named Francesca Cassio from Rome, Italy, could possibly be the one. But as soon as we met her, we knew she had to be the one. And luckily, so did the university. Dr. Cassio is the professor of music at Hofstra University. And since 2011, she has held the chair in my mother's memory and held it solidly. So from your bio data, I understand that you grew up in Rome and lived for several years in India, where you trained in Indian classical music by legendary singers. 
Can you tell us something about your life in India? Where did you live? How did you take an interest in studying the music, etc.? So, uh, yes, actually I was born and I grew up in Rome and I was baptized at, in the Vatican, <laughs> at the Vatican. So really I grew up in a very Catholic environment, um, but I always had a, a shonk. I always had a desire to go beyond uh, the culture and the religion in which um, I grew up and uh, I lived for a long time. And um, when I was a teenager, I felt something within me to search beyond and travel to India. So I decided actually to focus my MA in uh, ethnomusicology, studying classical medieval Indian music, Drupad. That's why I went to India for the first time to study with Ustad Rahim Faimuddin Khandagar who became my teacher of Drupad for 16 years. And you know that the Guru Shishya Parampara, the um, pedagogical system, the method of learning in India is very strict from a teacher to disciple, that one-to-one -one teaching, which really brought me uh, clearly a very different mindset and brought me into another dimension of music, very profound, which definitely entails also uh, not, not just a, a music class, not just learning the music, but absorbing the culture and the true meaning of becoming a disciple, a student, uh, and eventually being on the path of learning. So that was my initial, <laughs> my very first steps in India. And I lived in India for about 15 years in uh, different cities, uh, Banares, uh, Kolkata, Shantiniket, and uh, Delhi, Jodhpur, and uh, Amritsar also. The greatest reward for me was that my article gave the start uh, to a conversation, not only among academics, scholars, but a conversation that engaged women in India, young women in India who took courage and uh, decided to step up for their rights uh, of singing uh, at major Gurbaras, but especially at the Sri Harmandar Sahib, the Golden Temple in Amritsar, which eventually will happen soon. It's amazing. And finally, I know the answer to this, but Roini wants to know, do you perform? I do. I am a Kirtania, so I do sing uh, Kirtan at the Gurbaras, and I do sing, uh, of course, it's a, it's a praise, and I always sing in my heart. So uh, always the Shabbat resounds in my heart and in my mind. Thank you. about your professional journey to where you are right now? Well, I think unlike um, many uh, women attorneys or women judges, I didn't start wanting to be an attorney when I was 10 years old. It was something that I uh, started later on after college and after studying uh, other subjects. But after law school, I realized it was a very interesting intellectual uh, pursuit as well as an enormous power that knowing the law and being able to defend and, and help people uh, how it had. So I was very fortunate to have, um, unfortunately, well, fortunate or not fortunately, I didn't have any um, Indian uh, women role models whatsoever or any, any other Indian American role models. But growing up in the 60s in the suburbs, there were really no Indians uh, around. And having an American mother sort of... Uh, made it a little bit more distant. But I have to say, uh, as a professional, I've been as active as I possibly can, and it's been very rewarding. So what message and advice you have for young women who are aspiring to be part of our legal system these days? Um, I would say that um, I, again, my, my background is in biology, and in law school there were um, a few of us that had that biology background, and they said that we very much enhanced the legal profession by having that, uh, that view of the law. And I would say that the, I would still hold this uh, almost uh, 45 years later, that pursue what you enjoy, what you feel good at, and, and look at law school perhaps as um, an additional enhancement of, of whatever your basic uh, um, interests are, and you'll find it to be an extra rewarding uh, part of your career. Thank you. A 
it's really a great privilege to meet the lady who I met more than, four, I think, four decades ago. And I'm talking about the time when there was nobody taking the leadership role in the Indian American community here on Long Island. And that is the time I remember in old Akbar restaurant, which is called Mint now, and there was a function, there was a chief minister who had come from India to celebrate India's independence after struggle for centuries together to free India from colonization by the British. And he was helping out in organizing the parade in New York City, and he wanted to have somebody to come and honor the chief minister. So he got in touch with, the chief, with the, our very famous, very beloved Nassau County executive, Tom Galota. And when the function started, who did he send? It was Miss Elizabeth Dalal Pesala. And she came and she offered a hand of friendship to the Indian community and declared India's Independence Day. And I remember it was early 1980s. And that I saw that, which I saw, I said, this is fantastic. Kind of a role to play in order to bring our community. And I think this honor will not be complete if we don't focus on the person who was behind Miss Elizabeth Dalal Pesala. Honorable Judge John Pesala. And how many people they know or they, he touched their life? Look at that, all those people. Yep. And I know, and all the judges over here sitting on table 12 who have come <laughs> to only give the company. I know one of the judges over there, Judge Richman and Judge Leventhal. And it was in 2010 they honored me with a Liberty Bell Award, uh, which was fantastic for all the work that I was doing as chairperson of the Human Rights Commission for 20 long years, and also come on the Commission of Planning, and uh, many other uh, uh, duties also. I'm deeply honored and privileged to introduce to you guys the next, our next honoree, Dr. Saroj Shah, wife of Dr. I.C. Shah, and daughter of Dr. Naginda Shah, Graduated from BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad, India. She is a board certified OBGYN who participated in the New York area for over 35 years. I must say I'm deeply honored and humbled at the same time uh, to receive this award. And before you start, I wanted to thank Induji, uh, the chairperson of uh, uh, IAF. Uh, all the board of trustees and other board members and the panel of judges who, who considered me to be worthy of this award. So thank you so much. It's well deserved, Dr. Shah. I would like to ask you, what impact do you think cultural famili familiarities have on the compact, comfort and care of an individual? This is a very important part of the medical care. We were raised in, in uh, India and also all medicals here. We hardly get, the, get to see the other aspect of the whole person's care. So uh, actually the cultural know-how and the cultural familiarity is of utmost importance in the person's care. Uh, because without that, you are just treating the body and not the whole human being as, as such. So the cultural, uh, cultural familiarity and the cultural knowledge is very important when you are treating the patient. Uh, and this issue has been ignored by our community, the hospital community, the nursing home industry, and 
the whole healthcare facility as such. And the, that's why the cultural uh, competence should be always there. And uh, I, would, I would tell you, uh, I learned that about seven years ago. What do you hope young South Asian women will learn from your experiences as a medical professional and very active community member? Please uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, I can uh, this. I can speak to all South Asian women, young and old. But my message is for the youngsters, because youngsters is our future. And uh, I would say that you should get involved in the community, be active in the community give some time to community and and when you give the time give the time in a targeted way so that find find different issues uh, in the community and find something that really excites you really uh, bothers you really gets you angry and then you would act on it and that would bring the change and the change is brought by only one person and other follow so be that person be the leader and be that person and then when we be unite like-minded people, then we can bring the change in the community very quickly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shah, and congratulations again to you. Thank you for organizing this successful, outstanding women achievement event year after year, now on the ninth year. Thank you, every one of you sitting in the audience, coming here and supporting this event, which recognizes women of character, courage, commitment, and accomplishment. Let me start with this quote for International Women's Day. It was, in fact, sent by Prachi. Here is two strong women. May we know them, may we be them, may we raise them. It gives me so much pleasure to introduce a young physician who is with us in this audience today, who has impressed me in a short conversation that I had with her. I'm sure her parents are equally proud of her too. So congratulations to the proud parents. And thank you, the audience, for being here today in supporting all these women. So, growing up, Prachi, when she was in her high school, <laughs> she wanted to do something for her community. That was Long Island. She started with health camps while she was in high school. And she continued this passion as she was growing up and went into medical school. And then she went into her public health master's. And what she did, she was part of the ophthalmology club and she did glaucoma screening. And that was not enough. She went to Chennai for cataract surgery. And that's when she knew that having a cataract and then doing a surgery is really life changing. And that made her decide to do what she is today. So very happy. And I'm, I'm so proud of what you do here. And you know, it's not enough. And you know, I was talking to her and she said, I said, what is your aha moment? And you know what she said? There was a patient that I did surgery. She came back to me and she said, thank you. My life is different. And that's what Prachi does. And she doesn't want to keep it to herself. She wants to inspire aspiring physician, medical student. So Prachi, heads off to you, to your commitment, to the community, to us. We are very proud of you, Prachi. So Prachi, we have a lot of questions for you. Okay. 
you know, we are all mothers. We want to know how did you choose to be a doctor? So that's a very uh, loaded question. Um, I always had the passion to help others, and I think um, where it started was actually from my grandfather, my dadaji. Um, he was based in Delhi, and he opened over 2,000 uh, yoga centers um, all over India. Um, and he never, and he made this big yoga sanstan in India, in Delhi, and he never took any money for his teachings in yoga. So that was my biggest inspiration. Um, second, uh, both my parents are physicians. Uh, my cousin who's here is a physician. My masi who's here is also a physician. Um, my aunts, uncles, everybody here. Um, so I was always seeing their enthusiasm, their passion towards medicine, and that inspired me also. So when I was in high school, when I was in middle school, um, I started volunteering at North Shore LIJ Hospital. Um, I spent a lot of time at the Center for Extended Care um, up the hill and spent a lot of weekends with the elderly patients, um, you know, playing bingo with them, you know, feeding them, um, you know, delivering their medications for them, and also spent some time at the hospital itself in the maternity wow. ward as well. So that's where my inspiration came um, for becoming a doctor. Um, so I applied for the BAMD programs in high school, and I got accepted to the eight-year um, Brooklyn College SUNY Downstate um, BAMD program. And um, I think that being in medicine is like one of the most noble professions um, because when somebody comes to you to the, in the emergency room, regardless of their ethnic background, regardless of their socioeconomic status, you have the ability to make a difference in somebody's life um, in a positive way. And um, that's what keeps me going every day. If you have to give an advice to an aspiring physician, a young physician, what that would be? So I think the, uh, you know, the journey was very difficult um, to where I had to come. You know, there will be nights where you don't sleep because you're on call. Um, there will be nights where you have to study for hours uh, to do well on an exam. Um, but there are also moments of happiness. And I think the gratification from medicine comes as you... Um, become an attending when you see all the positive impacts that you make on patient lives. Um, and I think that um, you should follow your passion. So, for example, I've, um, I'm an ophthalmologist at Northwell, and I said that I want to do glaucoma screenings in my community. Um, and basically, I arranged for a mobile van. So I think if we... So we have a van... I'm just trying to get funding for uh, a non-mydriatic like fundus camera. Um, and from that, we're going to start doing more and more um, eye screenings. Um, and actually, the other day, an auntie came to me as a patient like from one of the gurdwaras, and I told her that I want to do a health fair at her gurdwara. So I think it's just um, you just have to keep on uh, doing the right thing and helping as many people as you can. I totally agree with that. You have to dream before your dreams can come true. So I really admire what you do and thank you for being such a wonderful role model for us and for everybody. Thank you. Congratulations. Here I'm um, honored to be introducing Ashmita who is, Ashmita is a multifaceted background in information science, political science and journalism. Ashmita Yogaraji brings the digital literacy to a traditional broadcasting environment in her role as a director of marketing at Just. So this uh, new, new world, new age is about, all about young people and we were so inspired to hear Prachi and let's see what Ashmita has to teach us. So Ashmita, in this such a young age, you have reached and you have really showed your bright light to the TV channel and you just were opening another um, branch in uh, California. So please tell us a little bit about yourself, how you reached to, did you know this, you wanted to do this since you were young or journalism is something that grew later at college age? Um, first of all, thank you everyone. Thank you uh, to the forum, Induji, for 
it's extremely humbling to be included in this group of women. Um, I, I feel surrounded by such accomplished, inspiring, and uh, you know, headstrong females. So um, thank you for that. Uh, in terms of how I ended up here, it's quite simple. I didn't really think I was going to end up in this field, but um, like some of the prior honorees have said, it's always about having the right role models mm -hmm. guiding uh, your, your way of thinking. And for me, I got extremely blessed to have my mom who uh, wow. founded the channel. Um, thank you. I guess moms are really doing well. So yeah. give it a big hand for moms. Right. Thank you. Um, I'm extremely lucky in that, you know, they always say strong women raise leaders, yeah. right? And um, my mom is probably one of the strongest women I know. Uh, she's the only South Asian female who has owned and operated her own uh, group of TV networks wow. uh, abroad for the last 13 years. So I'm extremely proud of her. And watching her build the company and the brand all these years, I said, I'm not going to do this. I have another question. As you are aware, we all women are trying to achieve parity in almost every field. Equal pay, equality, jobs. Having this platform, how can you help narrowing this gap? How can you use this platform to help women of today? Absolutely. Uh, you know, first you lead by example, right? Um, I think it's uh, a statement in and of itself when you see a female entrepreneur, um, a successful one, especially yeah. one who's made it in a man's world, um, right? So that is one thing. But then, y y like the theme for this event, Women Empowering Women, um, at Just, it's always our philosophy to mm -hmm. give other women not just a chance, but uh, the guidance to excel, right? So we have special programs at the company um, for female entrepreneurs uh -huh. who are looking to promote their business. We have special internships for students. Uh, once again, I don't think there's enough brown women in media, right? So um, to help those up and coming, you know, aspiring journalists and anchors or researchers, giving them a voice, uh, you know, and a platform that reaches millions of people on a daily basis yes, uh, to, to kind of share their thoughts and hone that expertise. Uh, so, you know, in addition to all of that, we like to make sure that the people who have the resources here are connected to the people who need the resources back home in India. Absolutely. Uh, because at the end of the day, what is the media's role if not to be a bridge between people looking to communicate, connect with each other, and, you know, uh, connecting those who can help with the ones who need help? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. My last question for you would be, being a social media expert that you are, we didn't really start our life with that. We're learning. We're trying to catch up. This world is for about young people. That's where we're enjoying Google, Facebook, Instagram, and all of it. It's all about you guys. What is your advice for us, all of us in the room mm -hmm. and young generation? How do we, how important it is, and how should we learn and follow that? Um, see, social media is, a, is kind of a beast, right? And um, that's not to say that if you can't tame the beast, it, it isn't a very helpful and useful one. Um, but it does have its drawbacks. You know, as a, as a yes. young, young person, uh, you know, who essentially grew up as this stuff was coming about, um, I would say social media is... It, it's the picture that we paint about ourselves, mm -hmm. right? For the rest of the world to see. It's not necessarily who we are. Yes. No one posts on their Instagram when they're having a bad hair day, yes. right? And uh, you have makeup apps. You can oh, look Oh, everything, yeah. everything. So it's really important um, for all of us, regardless of age or background or usage or, or preferred platform, that we uh, gain an ability to see what's real, and what's accurate, especially in a time of, you know, fake news and viral yes. videos. And nowadays, they can fake videos where someone is saying something that they didn't say, yes. right? So it's even more important um, as an informed citizenry for us to be able to decipher 
what's the truth and what's not. And all I would say is for everyone to have a, a doubtful mind when it comes to what you see on social media. Is that enough to just have a doubtful mind? Is there Question any way everything. we can... We can do something about it. Uh, that's a, that's probably a longer question. I, I know I'm I'm standing between everyone and dinner, so you know I, I won't get into that. But absolutely, you know, question everything. And um, like uh, one of our great former presidents said, trust but verify. Uh huh. Okay. Sounds very well. We're really you. proud of you. Thank you. Thank and you so thank you so much for coming here. And congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me. I like to say Sat Sri Akal to Sare Darchkanu, Jats Punjabi Diano, congratulations to Ashmita. She deserving a candidate for this honor, the woman leaders in business. And I like to congratulate our chairwoman, Indu Jaswal, doing a, such a wonderful job honoring these people, encouraging them to do the good work, continue to do the good work. I'm so happy and honored to be stand next to Induji and she's doing so many good things. Make me feel proud. Indian community is proud to have such a leader like Induji Aswal who works so hard, so hard for the community. Thank you, thank you and thank you Induji. Thank you Bobby Ji. Uh, today we are very happy. Uh, we have a very successful women's gala. And we have very good honorees. Congratulations to all the honorees. And we are very proud of Ashmita. Wish her all the best. And um, uh, thanks to the Just Punjabi for launching the office in uh, California. Wish you all the best. A happy International Women's Day to all. And congratulations to all the women in the world. Thank you so much. International Women's Day is the world day. Ladies, no, Parivara, no, bohat, bohat, badhai, uh, this is the first time I am attending this function and I am so proud of our women, our children, girls who have done so much, so well in this country and I am thankful to Induji who has uh, invited me and my daughter Manu Saluja, Manu Gibbons, she was honor last year. Thank you, Just Punjabi. Our Just Punjabi is our Ashmita. Today, honor is the Women's International Day. We have a lot of NOC. We have a lot of NOC. We have a lot of NOC. And we have a lot of NOC. Just Punjabi, Punjabi, Chardi Kalante Rave, Ajena Ne Duji Branch Kholiye, Is Tarah Aande Saalande Vich, Edda Se Brancha Hor Kholan. Thank you very much. My name is Rupa Mani. I am the executive board on IAF, Indian American Forum. Um, we are celebrating ladies, uh, women of empowerment. This is um, Women's History Month. So we make sure every year we celebrated the out celebrate the outstanding women of the community who are doing exemplary job in the community. And we have Ashmita with us and she is one of the honorees today. Ashmita, very, very congratulations, many, many congratulations to you, doing good job. And just Punjabi no Mubarka, they are doing ex excellent work. And I thank you everyone for coming today and making this gala a success. Thank you. Welcome all to the ninth Outstanding Women Gala here today at Akbar's. We, I'd like to congratulate all the honorees tonight. Special thanks to Induji, Tejo, Glamorous Events to put this event together. Special staff, you know, everybody, Akbar hosting it every year for us. Thank you all and have a great evening. I just want to congratulate all the honorees for their achievements. And I'm, I'm very proud of Prachi and a very, very happy National Women's Day to all the women in the world. I'm so happy to be part of this group. Today, our own daughter, Ashmita Yogi Raj, a daughter of Penny, she got honored. This is the first time a young girl who has risen with her hard work, with 
no sport and she created just tv who they just started a 13th chapter in san, san francisco wow. california so uh, we want to honor a group of a strong indian women who have achieved very well and i'll speak for at least two of them one is our rashmita yogi raj and others is prachi dua i think these young girls make us very proud they have done a remarkable work in broadcasting in medicine so i god bless you all of you especially the indian community the indian women and i want to thank just punjabi for being there main dr indrapal chhabra just punjabi de sare sunan walyan nu dekhan walyan nu jiyan nu aakda te ethe bada sona function chal reha hai indian american forum बहुत सारी एकलेम्ड लेडीज़ नू ऑनर किता गया है ऐसी कई बारी इग्नोर कर जाने हैं अभी साढे कार साढे जे मेल्स कुछ काम कर सकते ने दैट इज़ ओनली बिकॉज़ वी हैव स्ट्रॉंग लेडीज़ ट्रेनिंग बिहाइंड अस एंड लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट आई वुड लाइक टू कंग्रेट्यूलेट जस्ट पंजाबी कैलिफोर्निया ए we're talking to Dr. Francesca Cassio here at the Indo-American Forum's annual Women Empowerment Gala. Uh, Dr. Cassio, who's one of the honorees, it's so wonderful to see such a diverse panel of women being honored today um, at the foremost uh, of, of which is you. Tell us, you know, in your own words, um, how it feels to be part of an event like this. It's an absolute honor, and first of all, I'm. I'm honored to serve as the chair in uh, Sikh Musicology, the Sardarni Harban School Chair in Sikh Musicology at Hofstra University. And it is a great honor to receive this award with other um, amazing uh, women today. And we hope to be an inspiration for next generations, especially in the field of education, which I think is the very first step to the women's empowerment. Absolutely. And when it comes to um, bringing about education to women across the board, regardless of what country they're born in, or what socioeconomic status they may come from, or what the color of their skin may be, um, do you feel as a society enough is being done today to make that happen? Well, we can always improve. I can only say that I actually teach Sikh musicology, so I teach about the the music tradition which started with the Sikh gurus in uh, medieval India in the late 15th century. And I always wonder, well, what this knowledge carries today, why it is relevant today. And I think that the guru's message is still very relevant as it speaks about equality, equality of genders, first of all, equality of uh, castes, religions, and I think that we still have a lot to learn from the Sikh tradition. Well, we hope that we can have you back on our network to get some of those teachings and that wisdom out and um, shared with our audiences. And once again, we're at the Women's Empowerment event celebrating International Women's Day. And we're so honored and happy to be a part of this event in particular um, because it's a great display of women supporting other women in the room here. Thank you.